there. This is your boy Big D. And yes, I am recording in the dark. Why? Because I can. Sorry about this video being two days too late. I was able to watch this past Sunday's game. I decided to take the day off from work. Unfortunately, I can't do that too many times. I'm trying to get out of Sunday, but we'll see what happens. Last Sunday I had to work, and I missed that game. Uh, the game against Pittsburgh. A, a couple days later, I found out more about what happened. Two major things I want to address is... Travis Fulgham's that dude. He, he showed what he could do against the Niners, and the next week against Pittsburgh, he turned it to the next level. But unfortunately, we couldn't get the job done, and... I also found out that during the ending stretch of the game, we decided to have Nate Gary, that fucking clown, cover the best wide receiver on the other team, Chase Claypool, on a third and seven or whatever. I'm like, why in the ever-living hell would you do that? Pretty much everybody, even experts, were like, what the fuck were you thinking? But Doug had his own explanation. He did not want to waste a timeout. Really? That's your fucking excuse? And unfortunately, the drama doesn't end there. Apparently, Howie Roseman's on a power trip, and apparently he's taking control of the roster, and he decides who starts and dresses and who doesn't. It's like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. At this point, he, at this point, we need to get rid of him. He's been an absolute liability these past couple years. He's the one, this is the guy who put us in this shitty cap situation to begin with, and he can't draft for a damn. And it's like, why the hell did you take, why the hell did you take this Sunday off? You knew they weren't going to win. Maybe I thought we might. Maybe, just maybe. Because let me tell you something, it's about, it's called the attitude of Philly. The attitude of Philly is, every game that comes up, bring it on. We're not scared. We meet that shit head on, and we go at him. Shout out to my boy Vince Status. I decided, you know what, let's get it. Midnight Green Mafia against the Black and Purple Battalion. Let's make this a great contested game. So, the Eagle, uh, Eagles got the, got the first possession, and... John Hightower dropped a deep pass, and it's like, oh man, what the hell? And not to mention, unsurprisingly, the morons on Eagles Twitter already wanted his ass cut for that. It's like, really? Yeah, that that was bullshit. But he, he, cutting him, he's not. You're not gonna learn your lesson that way. And then Baltimore, Baltimore gets on the board. Wentz, Wentz ends up fumbling one, although there there was a helmet to helmet hit that wasn't called. Although to be fair, Baltimore was called li was called for pretty much everything in the kitchen sink, so we can't we, we couldn't complain about the refs too much, because they got way more penalties than we did this game. It, it, long story short, it, by halftime, any chance any chance the midnight green. Mafia had of winning was quickly vanquished. It seemed that way in the first half. I mean, the offense would the offense wasn't in sync. The running lanes were stuffed. The passing lanes were blocked. Wentz, they just let they just they're just making Wentz stand there, just stand there in the pocket, and if nothing happens, he just gives up. That o the O line wasn't blocking. We didn't have Lane Johnson, so. This, this guy named Jamon Brown filled in for him. Oh my God! I'll I'll bring I'll get in I'll get more into him later. I, I do apologize. I came at Wentz pretty hard in the tweets, saying that he was an overpaid bum. But he. he yeah, we we were down seventeen nothing by halftime, and then by the uh, it. Typical Eagles, only playing one half of football. They wait. They wait until the second half to get on the scoreboard. 
and then they wait until they're down 30 to 14 in the fourth quarter to start getting an offense going, to start getting rhythm. They wait until everything falls to crap because we don't need to be creative. We don't need to give these receivers a chance. We just need to for- do the same things over and over again, force the ball to Ertz all the time, who, by the way, do- doesn't seem to really give a shit anymore. Especially I'm hearing about these rumors that he's playing like shit on purpose because he didn't get a payday. Unfortunately, he got hurt in this game, so all this talk of trading him, that's pretty much down the crapper. We got to wait until the se- we're stuck with him until the season ends. But at least three to four weeks, we could just give these wideouts a chance. I mean, John Hightower redeemed himself later on that, that led to another score. The first score we got, Miles Sanders broke away. And he ended up fumbling the ball. J.J. Sega whiteside got a touchdown. It wasn't a receiving touchdown. He got a fumble recovery touchdown. And he celebrated it like we just won a championship. Now I kind of see... Now I kind of see everybody's frustration with him. Although... Oh, who am I kidding? I've been seeing everyone's frustration with him. We took this fucking clown over D.K. Metcalf. I'm not saying that J.J. couldn't be good one day. But uh, but it, the that was still what the hell. You could tell when I I truly believe Wentz does not like him. I feel like Wentz just the way I see it. JJ was dead in the water the moment Wentz chose to throw to Greg Ward a lot more. Wentz just just Wentz just refuses to throw his way. I feel like Wentz doesn't like him. I don't know if that's true, but I think it's believable, and I don't blame him. Yeah, Miles Sanders gets hurt, but luckily we only lose him for a game or two. Hopefully we'll get him back by Dallas, who've got their own problems. I'll get into that later. Yeah, John Hightower makes up for it. The next deep ball that went his way, he caught. That's who we we need to we need to get these receivers involved. I mean, yeah, John Hightower fucked up earlier on, but Wentz threw another deep ball to him. He came through this time. That's how they learn. That's how they learn. You got to give them more chances. They're only going to get better the more chances you give them. If you just pull them after one drop, it, 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 they'll never get better. Travis Folga, it, it, not to mention, we waited we waited until the end of the second quarter to start throwing to Travis Fulgham. Yeah, I mean the entire fir, the entire the first three quarters they had went standing around like a statue in the pocket, which is not his thing. But once we were down thirty to fourteen in the fourth quarter. We, we, we were oh, now all of a sudden Wentz was rolling out all of a sudden he was extending plays he was getting his receivers more involved instead of instead of forcing it to earth so he could drop it like it's hot about four damn times he caught he caught a couple first downs but it, it's time to move on from Ertz. I'm sorry it, it, it's time. He just ain't it anymore. And once again, the, this this organization overvalues these old guys, especially the ones on that Super Bowl roster. I'll make a separate I'll get them I'll make a separate video explaining more about that. But Yeah. And then next thing you know, we're we're down 30 to 22, but I felt like it was too late. Baltimore's going to run the clock out. But we'll just see what happens. I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking at that moment, we made two consecutive two-point conversions. We attempted the first time, and it didn't work. I'm like, why the hell would you do that? I mean, actually, I liked the idea of going for two the first time. I just didn't like the execution. I just didn't like the play call. I liked the decision to go for two all those times. I just didn't like the execution. But we made the next two, we made the next two times. And then it was an eight-point game. Baltimore had the ball. I'm like, all they have to do is just keep scrambling and they'll win this. But Baltimore, 
I would like to I would like to say that during during the times we were getting we were taking momentum back, we were getting momentum going. Baltimore was abandoning what was working. I mean, they had the good game plan set out. They were doing misdirection, which our linebackers bite on every single damn time. They were scram they were extending plays, they were scrambling. Marquise Brown got the better of Slay a couple times, showing that that kid's got potential. But they decided to, for some reason, like there were certain stretches of the stretches of this game where Baltimore was just making some of the most asinine decisions you could possibly imagine, and not to mention they were killing themselves with penalties. On top of that, they had Lamar standing there like a statue. He he kept he kept running. He, there was times where he kept running backwards, allowing him to get sacked. Or force the ball into unnecessary situations. Or when he had time and he just... He like threw a ball that if it went past 15 yards, it went straight to the ground. It didn't even get anywhere near the receiver. I was like scratching my head at some of those moments. I was happy they were happening, but it's like, come on, man. But again, right? They were doing the same thing. They were those sideways runs that weren't working half the time. Three three quarters of the time they just were not working, and they they should have scrambled. They would have they would have put us away right there, I believe, if they did. But it's like, are you trying? I was like, are you trying to hand us an undeserved victory? But soon enough, Wentz gets us back into it. Baltimore kill Baltimore gets in their own way with a pass interference. Next thing you know, we're down twenty eight to thirty. Two point conversion. If we had just kicked the field goal the first time, we would have just kicked the extra point. Now, Baltimore still had plenty of time to go down the field and kick a field goal. They could, they could either kept keep shooting themselves in the foot like they have the past couple series and go to overtime, or they could just go back to what was working and kick the field goal and beat us then. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and we had to go for two and. We decided to go for a fucking read option that was poorly planned, poorly executed, and it was something that wasn't going to work in the first place. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Doug? Again, and I've said before, Wentz, this team, this team's over reliance on Carson Wentz backfired yet again. They waited, they wait, they only, typical Eagles, they only play one half of football. And you don't, that's ex, that's exactly how you don't win football games. You don't win football games by playing only one half. It's a, it's a four quarter game, not a two quarter game. And unfortunately, they never learned their lesson. Of course, I do feel that Baltimore could have ended us at any point And that they were just straight up toying with us. I can't. I, I like I said before. I came at Wentz hard in the tweets. I was, be, I was like he was an overpaid bum. I was saying that. But shout out to my boy Nick Viscuso. He may disagree with me. As a matter of fact, I know he's going to disagree with me on this one. It ain't Carson Wentz. It's the play calling. It's Doug and his goddamn organizational puppets like Sangrello and that sorry bum Marty Morningweg. Why the fuck did we bring him back to begin with? They're puppets. They're just yes men that will tell him everything that he wants to hear. To call him the same shit every play and then waiting until everything falls to shit to let Wentz do his thing. And not only that, that offensive line can't block, especially the guy that came in for Lane Johnson, Jamon Brown. There were a couple times where he got complete he got completely thrown sideways like he just got thrown out like a drunk man that just got tossed out of a bar in one of those old school cartoons. One of the, one of Wentz's sacks, he w- he sacked Wentz himself. And another play, he was like fixing, he was like tightening his gloves. Yet there's still a play going on. Like what are you, t- like what the hell? Lane Johnson better come back quickly. I mean Joey Shake, Sh- my boy Joey Shakes, made a video about all the times Jamon Brown was getting abused. You might as well, you might as well speed them up and put them in an endless loop and play yakety sacks. That would make that would get 
That would get a shit ton of views. But yeah, fortunately, Eagles couldn't get it done. I didn't expect us to, but I would believe that we made it competitive and that we would take the fight to them. Some people believe that we did, but the way I see it, only showing half, only showing up one half, bat, bit us in the ass yet again, like it has many times, and it's it's another tradition that dates back to the days of Reed. Now, but this, but luckily, I do work. I do work on Thursday, but I get out at. I get. Out, I chose to get out at six. I'm. Gonna, I get to pick my own hour, so I get. I pick to get out at six. So by the time I get back, I'll be able to head straight to the bar and watch that Thursday night game against the Derp. That should be a game we end up winning. We should win that game. At this point, in my opinion, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for us to not win now, especially the fact that Dallas looked like absolute dog shit against the Cardinals. I mean, it's really is horrible what happened to Dak, but they're just that team is gone. Unless they somehow get some magic going, which is something which is going to be something we need to do very quickly because it's going to be nothing but pain and misery later on in the season, especially with Seattle, Green Bay, New Orleans. Anyway, I'm going to get up out of here. I went on long enough this Thursday, bring on the Giants, a team that we enjoy, we found joy in beating for the last number of years. And hopefully we should and we should we should continue the trend. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, peace out.